I'm from a grimy era, let's talk about it Gotta keep a pole, can't walk without it Did some things in the streets, but I won't talk about it See some things in the streets, but I won't talk about it I'm from a hood that's thorough, they don't play here And they don't play on these blocks, it ain't a daycare A new kid gets shot every day here I guess that's why my heart colder than the rain there Now, 50 Cent and Onyx was both signed to Jam Master J in the 90s. Being that they were signed to the same record label, they spent time together in the studio and would eventually form a bond. And not to mention, they're both from Southside, Jamaica, Queens. Now, on Onyx's 1998 album, 50 Cent would be featured on their single called React. Now, while Onyx would be on tour on the road, when they perform React, they'll have one of their affiliates perform and rap along with 50 Cent Park. Now, Onyx will have a show at home in New York at the legendary Apollo Theater and 50 Cent would be in a building where he was supposed to hit the stage along with Onyx. But when it was time for 50 Cent to spit his verse, the Onyx affiliate would cut 50 off and begin to perform and rap 50 Cent verse like he's been doing at prior shows. Now with 50 Cent not being able to spit his verse to react live on stage with Onyx, 50 would feel disrespected and walk off stage. Now shortly after, 50 Cent would put out his record for How to Rob where he spoke on robbing most of the music industry and he also sent shots at Sticky Fingers on his record. Yo Sticky, give me the cat. For an empty three. I beat you like that white boy on MTV. Now, supposedly, it's other songs that 50 Cent took shots at Sticky Fingers on as well. Now, according to Frederick Starr, he says he went to 50 Cent Wankster video shoot with a well known figure from Queens named Tata, who 50 even mentions on his Ghetto Quran song. Now, supposedly, Frederick calls Tata over to meet 50, and 50 had a look as if Frederick was trying to be funny or even set him up. I don't know, maybe he thought I was trying to set him up, bring Tata to the set. Some, but, it wasn't even like that. but things wouldn't go left and everything would end on a positive note. Now, according to Fredro, he would be in Vegas and he gave word to Shy Money XL that he wanted to holler at 50 about Onyx and G Unit working together. But 50 never hollered at Fredro, which left Fredro feeling disappointed at 50. Now, the final straw with 50 Cent would be Fredro star affiliating himself with Bangham Smurf and Domination, who fell out with 50 and 50 was actually beefing with at the time. Fredro would link with Smurf and Domination and begin shopping a deal for them and they eventually signed with Koch Records and it seemed like 50 wasn't a big fan of this whole connection. Now according to Fredro Starr, he'll decide to go holler at 50 Cent backstage at the Vibe Awards where he approached 50 Cent and G-Unit but things would go left. Now supposedly after Fredro asked 50 what was up, 50 responded and swung on Fredro following with 50 and G-Unit beating Fredro homie up and taking his watch. I'm like, hey, what up? So he's like, ain't nothing up. And then it just swung at the now there's a story of 50 Cent pulling up the Bingham Smurf and Domination video shoot for your lose prior and people from the hood throwing bottles at 50 and basically chasing him out the hood. Now Fredro Star was there so that could be where a lot of 50 Cent's energy towards Fredro came from along with a few other incidents that I explained. Now when Fredro speaks on a fight incident depending on what interview it is his story seems to be a little inaccurate. For example when he explains what happened he says Yayo was there but Tony Yayo was actually in jail when this altercation happened. I was locked up. He's I didn't even know what happened. Now, in Fredro more recent interviews, it seems like he's in a different space and he doesn't seem to be dwelling on his past issues with 50 Cent and G Unit. Now, we all know the history between 50 Cent and Supreme, the boss of Supreme team. Now, when Ja Rule and 50 Cent was at odds, Supreme would be running with Ja Rule and Irv Gotti during their beef. Now, according to Diddy former bodyguard Gene Dell, there'd be a time where things could have went totally left between 50 and Preem. Now, supposedly, 50 Cent former manager at the time, Chaz Williams, a.k.a. Slim, was a party promoter and Gene was ahead of his security at the time. So, Chaz would be throwing a party in Las Vegas and 50 would be in a and according to Gene, 50 and him even took their flight together and got a chance to build and speak on topics like Big and Tupac beef. After having a layover flight that stopped in St. Louis, 50 Cent and Gene will finally make it to Vegas and Gene will run into Tony Yayo and 50 in the bathroom. Now Gene will give 50 Cent a Nina so he'll be protected in Vegas at the party. Now the night will go on, they'll be in a venue as the party taking place. Chaz will send Gene outside to make sure Ja Rule and his people got in the club. Now as 
Gene was on his way to get Ja Rule, 50 would ask Gene where he was going, and Gene would reply to make sure Ja and his people good, and they get in the venue. Now, according to Gene, as he get outside to get Ja Rule, he noticed that 50 was out front as well, posted up over the barricades in front of the club, grilling the limo that Ja Rule and his people was in. Now, Prima come out the limo and begin to grill 50 as 50 grilled them back with a lot of tension in the air. Prima would tell Gene he's not coming in, and they were going somewhere else and to let Chaz know. Prem must have felt that yo 50 was good because he got back in that mother limousine, man, and they drove the fuck off. Now, according to Gene, he would tell Chaz that Prem and Ja Rule left and they were headed somewhere else. And he also let him know that Prem was grilling 50, but 50 wasn't backing down because 50 had a gun that he had gave him early on that day. And Chaz basically told Gene to get the gun back from 50 because 50 was a wild boy. She said, yo, get that back from him. That boy a loose cannon, man. Now, even though nothing happened this particular night, things could have definitely went left, especially if Prem had a gun on him. It definitely could have led to a shootout between 50 and Prem. And if Prem would have got aggressive, 50 could have ended up shooting him. Who knows what would have happened. Now, of course, after this whole situation, the infamous fight between Ja Rule and 50 Cent would go down in Atlanta. Then shortly after that, 50 Cent will be shot nine times. And of course, after 50 Cent was shot nine times, he separated himself from Chaz Williams, a.k.a. A slim because he felt like he set him up or maybe switched sides on him as he mentioned on many men and rest in peace to Chaz and jump in my comment section and let me know what y'all think but anyway if you're a fan of these old hip-hop stories tell a friend and tell a friend about my page like comment subscribe and hit that notification bell more content coming and I'm out one